Look at this floodplain. This is really cool. Uh huh. Look at that. Hello, everyone. Thranks is here. Welcome back to No Man's Sky. So 217, wow, really pushing along. We're on this extreme sentinel planet, as we've been notified a couple of times. Also a toxic planet. We landed here after we did the Nexus quest in the last mission. We're going to learn a couple of Viking words. Like the word for will and the word for four. We're going to stay away from this nonsense... Maybe if we do this, it'll lose interest. No, it looks like it's... Oh, no, nope, there it goes. Okay. Runes take shape upon the stone. Burning with light, they sing to me of the Viking ancients in the language of my people. As Herc stood upon the sacred mountain, Nal climbed to its peak, and there with fists outstretched challenged Herc. Fool, Nal cried. The sentinels cannot be vanquished. Herc, with furious rage, struck the fool from the mountain. <laughs> fool... For three moons and suns, Nal fell before being claimed by Doom. Uh, I would like help with language, please. The Viking word of. Alright, well. It's important. Whoa! Look at that creature. Eats bloody organs. Okay. Well, we're gonna get ourselves a nice picture here. So we're gonna get a we're gonna get a photo of this creature, and we're not gonna put ourselves in the foreground of it. A big thanks to Space Monkey and their comment about photography in general. I do not claim to be a photographer. Oh, they're like, no, this is your limit for pictures. That's fine. Um, but your advice was very sound, and anything that's gonna help my thumbnails be more cinematic, I deeply appreciate. So from now on, we're gonna be taking images without us clobbering a quarter of the image up front, which I. See, I think the ship detracts now. We're going to put a little more thought into them. And maybe take take less, but... I feel like the horizon line shouldn't mimic the spine of this creature. We'll see. I think that was a better picture, but, you know, we don't always take pictures of creatures. I just think that's a pretty neat one. Pulpy roots. I'll take some of that action. This is an unidentified plant. Oh, it's a fungus. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I mean, you know, consider the source. Oop, okay, and that's our, that's our signal to go. Let's not be harassed by the sentinels now. I don't want to be here any longer than we have to be. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous planet. As far as toxic planets go, this one is pretty nifty. I think that we can go ahead and break out of the atmosphere. And let's assess, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, there's a black hole in this system that we were going to use to try to get a jump start towards the center of the galaxy, as that really kind of is our... Our next objective is to get the ice and tam. I know we have the Thranxian Expanse and all is great there, but truth be told, I keep hearing about what a lovely place ice and tam is. I'm starting to doubt if there even is a black hole in this system now. I could have sworn there was, but ah ha ha, there it is. Funny you could miss a thing like that. It's so close to the space station, too. Oh, my. And there's our freighter. Okay, well, let's dock with our capital ship. Because we're not going to take our explorer through the black hole and risk damaging some major component. Ooh, look out for that engine exhaust. Playing a fast and loose game here, Thranxes. Look at that turn. Whoa. That was slightly awkward. Which 
away reality while it lasts. I don't want that mission on my screen. Thank you much. Okay, wonderful. Now, I think what we're going to do... Uh, we're going to have to take our freighter off and, and land it somewhere else. Yeah, Starship. Okay, where's the pilot? Uh, what do you have to... What are you selling? Yeah, nothing that I care about. That's that's fine. Let's see your ship. Oh, right. Yes, I need to scan them beforehand. And we don't have the room anyways. No, we're going to go and I guess call our capital ship to a slightly different location. Because that's just what we have to do to spawn in the rest of our fleet, sadly. All right, so we're going to warp you from there to here. Reposition the entire fleet. It's like, sir, why are we closer to the asteroid field? Oh, don't you worry about that. Don't you worry about that. You just let me worry about that. Uh, all right, now, where are we with this? We're not going to take the fighter. I think we'll take one of our one of our unique ships here. What do we have? The end of sleep. Uh, yeah, a shield and a little bit of phase beam. That's probably good enough to take across the threshold. We got all these decorations on board and some fuel. Yes, I... Uh, reluctantly, I'm going to hold off real quick. And instead, let's check our squid ship. Because this one would probably look neater doing it. I don't know about that style bonus, but... technology is not there. So we'll have to get that one ready to go through the black hole. And by that we just need a little bit of weapon and shield upgrades. Just a few in the event that we have to find ourselves in a battle as soon as we go to the other side. And here I'm ready to leave this system, but wait a second. We haven't. We have all this undiscovered space. Okay. Well, maybe we just need to fly around with our exotic class ship for a little bit. It's it's been quite a while since we brought this one out of the hangar. A hot planet with blue oceans. How intriguing. Let's hit this peninsula here. Hyperdrive is flat empty, but we're not going to be doing any warping. This silver... Let's just go ahead and put in our inventory like that. We could do the efficient thrusters. Economy scanner. I mean, really... Oh, wait. Nope, we're making planet fall. Hold on. Alright, so that looks like a pretty large peninsula actually what about this is this is an interesting set of islands they're like little spires how intriguing look at this tempted to just land on one of these but no i think we're going to land on Now let's let's stick on the on the coast for now. We can always assess the ocean in small small amounts. All right, let's land. Let's see what kind of weather this place is. Uh, landing, please. Oh yeah, that's right. We have awkward landing now. Direct sunlight. Oh, we're already getting predator notifications. Oh, yes, we are. Oh, drones investigating. But I'm defending my life. Look at these floodplains. Look at that horizon. How interesting. And these colors. 
the blue sky gives it an odd feeling for being such a hot planet in direct sunlight. Hmm. Armored clams. It's not all that hot here, really, at all. Look at this floodplain. This is really cool. Uh-huh. Look at that. Well, we'll scan some of this. Oof! So bright with our, our torch in hand. That's some remarkable clarity to that water as well. Let's scan some of these plants. Parasitic leaching as a nutrient source. Okay. So it's like feeding off of insects? Kind of like the pitcher plant, I imagine. Young, complex, eats free radicals. Oh, it's a superfood. <laughs> we call those antioxidants where I come from. What have we here? More free radicals, and it has stinging fruit. Well, this place is really interesting. This mineral was formed by soil amalgamation. Contains silicates. Look at that, we have a, oh, that's an observatory off planet. We don't care about that. Look at these little honeycombed water caves. These are pretty interesting. Let's see if it's gonna let us scan that creature. Doesn't look like it. So the water is much, much cooler. The water is not really hot at all. So this planet could so support a diverse uh, array of life under the water, where things can get a re get refuge from the direct sunlight above. Bioelectric defenses. Ooh, don't mess with those. Those weren't even jellyfish. Frequent shoaling. Okay. See what some of these underwater plants look like. Omni seasonal. Oh! Oh, look at these creatures. Eats hydrothermal minerals. Hold on. Oh, there. I frightened them. Look, they're. I want to say they're like aquatic mammals, but they absolutely look reptilian. I'm not really certain. Does it say elderly, prime, notes, moon baby? What the heck is a moon baby? Oh, we're going to get all caught up in the jellyfish. Okay, well, I didn't mean for that to happen. It was an accident. Look how shallow it is here. What a sandbar. This is a, a neat planet. It it absolutely feels significantly different than some of the other hot planets. The water bling, being blue and the sky being blue gives it a very neat feel, like it's just on the cusp of being an overheated planet. Not not quite too far removed from a tropical planet, save for the fact that it's all dried up floodplains. But a lot of moisture is trapped in the air. Doesn't look like there's a lot of precipitation either. Just moisture perpetually trapped in the atmosphere. Exotic, timid, eats petals, has magnetic teeth. Oh, I want to learn about that one. Hot yippos. Let's let's see that one. Um, discovery. Yeah, this this one. 
The ex hot yeposo. Yep, so. Especially adapted to the unimaginable heat, ex hot yepso was first encountered on the planet Emu Beta. Gentle creatures, though timid, they are reluctant to approach strangers, but display complex social behaviors within their herd. Their finely tuned sense of smell draws them to the most beautiful, richly scented flowers, which they then consume whole with its magnetic teeth. Interesting. How about our Kilofria? Let's see what this one's all about. Archilofree was first recorded on planet Emu Beta, surviving despite the extreme temperature. Gentle creatures, though timid, they're reluctant to approach strangers, but display complex social behaviors within the herd. Another social animal. Sharp vision allows them to detect seeds just as they begin to swell their pods, giving them an edge over their over other foraging creatures and lays beautiful eggs. Hmm. This is an interesting planet. I would be curious to know if the temperature is increasing or decreasing. It's quite possible that this planet is drying out, or maybe it's slowly being terraformed and seeded into a more temperate planet. I like these little, these little pockets here. You know, with all these watering holes and this underwater cave system just beneath beneath the surface of these of these um, floodplains here, I would imagine that that's in a lot of ways how some of these animals survive. I'm almost curious if the amount of water available continues as you go inland. I think before we leave, we'll try to follow the coastline in. Maybe see how much the elevation changes. Look at that. Again, it has the plateaus, but by and large, the surface is very low. Very low elevation, very close to sea level dips down a good bit, but I'm not really seeing pockets of water. I'm not really seeing lakes or ponds or even rivers. A few gashes. Oh, that one's not quite... Hold on. Look at this. So what we have is what would be... I guess this would be a wadi, a dried up riverbed. Hmm. But then right over here, boom, there's water. Not even just, it looks like maybe 20, 30 feet below the elevation over there. You know, I hate to say it, but this planet almost looks like it was scorched. Not over time either, but with some kind of weapon, like it was just glassed. Look at this. So you have the natural tectonic activity that created these lakes, and it's almost like this was some sort of, I don't know, detonation. It almost makes me think that this planet was purged. And there's like no mountains here at all to speak of, just these plateaus everywhere. All right, let's go see how the moons to this planet look. Moon number one. Or uh, no, that's that's the planet we put we built our base on. That's the toxic planet with all the mean sentinels. Oh, let's not do that. Okay. I think this is another kind of interesting chance to get a picture like this, I think. I like the way the, the, the planets kind of just peek over the horizon, although this is a moon. A rainy moon. 
with high sentinel activity, uh, sure, let's go to the observatory. Let's see what's up there. Perhaps we'll get a line on a distress signal. We're going to keep chasing down distress signals until we identify an S-class ship that we can then give back to the community for the one we borrowed. I think that's a good way to pay it forward. And there's a lot out there. We just have to get lucky. But you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, right? That's what they say. Oh, and we're dealing with a night rainstorm already. Okay. Not really a good indicator on the, the colors. Ooh, blistering floods. Almost like this planet is just overheated also from the sun. Perhaps, perhaps there were experiments or modifications done to the, the star of this system. It's causing it to increase. Or it could just be the natural life cycle. Actually, that's... If I go with Occam's razor, that's likely the most probable reason, being the simplest one. It's just that the star in this system is slowly increasing in heat. Scout Lufang, what say you? The warrior is young and looks terrified. Their terminal screen is full of orders instructing them to head into the forest and join a military campaign against the Sentinels. When they see me, their eyes widen. They prefer their multi-tool towards... Or they proffer their multi-tool towards me with trembling hands. New recruit, abandoned post. Desert Viking high command orders. Take multi-tool weapon. Mm, their yelps sound pleading. The fear in their movements are more than apparent. They're so on edge, they don't seem aware of the security cameras that surround us watching our every move. I refuse your multi-tool. I refuse and try my best to give the young warrior a stirring bark. They looked cheered by this effort, or perhaps shamed by the comparison, and take back their weapon. They will die in glorious battle. That was the right thing to do. The Viking are not going to accept them if we allow them to hand over their weapon. It's, it's not going to do them or us any favors. I feel like this building is leaning. We got some units, we got some nanites. Yeah, look, this building is crooked. Big time. Look at this. Its hallways are all twisted. Let's see what kind of a a beacon sent long ago from a distant system awaits my response. Three numbers are visible above an empty input box. I think I know what comes next. Hmm, how about 2170? You don't say. A location in the distant stars. Interesting. It was not a distress beacon, but instead some ancient ruins. back on our parent planet that has that has this moon in orbit. Ooh. There's that blistering rainstorm. Can't see a thing. I think we should scan a few plants. Try to catalog a couple of life forms. Annual spore clouds. Uses anaerobic digestion. Oh, hold on. Got some small life forms amongst the brush here. They appear to be a small group of three, a slow grazer, strongly radioactive. Ooh, we're cooking. You know what? I don't feel like I have a good grasp on this planet because I can't see anything between the rain and the lack of sunlight. Let's break out of the atmosphere and see if we can locate the star. And we'll just go to the day side of the moon, I think, is going to be the proper response. Boy, it doesn't it doesn't look like much. It doesn't look like much from from up here. 
let's let's re-enter the atmosphere here and get a look at the colors on this moon. Oh. And look at that, we found a trade area. Wow, this is a very intense storm. Slow down. Reverse, reverse, reverse impulse. Hopefully that landing pad aligned with us. Good. So it almost seems like it's red, red grass and green sky. This building seems crooked too. Is it me? Are we? Are we like walking on uneven ground here? Hold on. Perhaps it's just because the moon is so small. This whole planet could use a little bit of true level. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Maybe we've just spent too much time with true level and now everything feels crooked. Ah! That, this feels... So this, if I look that way, it feels a lot more out of, out of alignment than this direction. I guess we should check our exosuit, make sure we don't have anything we want to sell. Oxygen filters, polyfiber, microprocessors. It's all a bunch of stuff we don't need to be carrying on us. I think for now we're going to send these to the freighter. I think that's the right call. And we'll just hold on to the, to the rest of everything else. I think we're going to sell these storm crystals, or at least we'll sell five of them. And try to let the storm pass a little bit. I can't justify having two stacks of them. Almost at half a billion units. Doing really good on that front. We'll get rid of two metal plates. That's pretty good. And then cargo. We're still doing very good here. Ooh, wow. We have, in fact, been crushing our oxygen. Let's buy some of that, I think. Oh, there's only 65. Well, I'll take it. And we just need to keep that in mind. That we're going to need a lot more oxygen. Okay, now we have some, some color in this crooked, crooked planet. rocky. It's rocky with um, these look like coniferous trees. Uses photosynthesis. At least that's something familiar. Uh, Lovifacium? Sure. Look at this tectonic activity going on here. Okay, now that the weather is relaxed a little bit, let's take a tour of the terrain. Ooh, there you go. Wow, this exotic class ship can really get up and go once you let it go. This planet is neat, but it's not too remarkable. The red grass, it's not even like grass, it's like clovers, almost. It's interesting. Alright, let's find ourselves the other moon. And then I'm, I'm starting to feel the wanderlust. I'm anxious to punch to the next system. But I don't want to shortchange any of the planets or moons in this system. They, they need their, their due. Mm 
Mm-hmm. It's on the other side of the planet. All right. Let's go. We're going to change it off of that quest because I don't I don't want that on my screen. There's our moon, last but not least. All right, let's cut over to it. Oh, this one looks cold. Well, there goes my theory about stellar activity. Unless... Well, it does appear like this moon is getting some sunlight. It's an arctic moon. Uh, let's go on the daytime side. If we want to accurately assess what's going on, we need some light to see to see everything. Wow, with the rock formations. Sparsely dotted with trees. A nice blue familiar atmosphere. Green trees you would expect to see. Ah, oh, this looks like a little cave maybe, not much. You know, there's a little bit of cracks in the surface here. Let's, let's see if we can find a building though. I would love to find a building. There we go. Four seconds to the unknown building. Hopefully it's something that's not uh, a trading area. I mean, we'll take it. We'll take it. It's better than nothing. Let's land the end of sleep. And go for a walkabout here. Only the occasional snowfall. Ooh, and the purple cave marrow on the surface. That's pretty. I like that purple and blue with the snow. Other than that, it's got rather typical green trees and a blue sky. It feels fairly familiar. Ah, this is what I was hoping for, some of the cave life, but it's not really a cave, is it? I mean, there are some cave cave uh, flora down there. Oh, hold on. We have a life form. Peaceful. Highly fertile. Well, I suppose you'd have to be on an Arctic planet. You would need very high chance of procreation with each mating encounter in order for the species to survive in abundance. Either that or you'd have to be super well adapted to the cold even at an infant's state of development. I think what we're going to do is we're going to hop right over here and grab some more navigation data from these ancient computer structures. That way we can get more cartographic entries. Ooh, another creature. A gnarly one. Eats ground meat. Strongly radioactive. It's a pretty common thing here. I'd like to see more about... I always do that. I'd like to see more about this creature, actually. The CGOABK from the planet Rorenotor Minor, where they fight for survival amidst permanent sub-zero temperatures jerky and unbalanced in its movements, its unusual brain chemistry leaves it prone to sudden outbursts of aggression. After making a kill, these carnivorous beasts shatter the skulls of their prey and offer the brain matter to the oldest member of their pack. Wow. That is highly unusual learned behavior. Let's see if we can watch it in its natural habitat for just a moment. Hopefully it doesn't sense us as prey. Oh, there it is. It's going after something. And perhaps it's just not hungry. 
it said sudden outbursts of aggression. That means the rest of the time it's probably just not doing anything. Temperatures are starting to dwindle. I think the next time we find a major oxygen crop, we're going to stop and harvest it, no matter where we are. A lot of the same creatures here. I think, I think we'll give it one more picture. This time we'll include our entire ship. I'll put the rings in the background. When the night sky is lit up with the illuminated rings, I just think that's really neat. Especially the way it slips behind the planet. I heard something very unusual. Oh, we have more creatures over here. Long distance migration, likely due to the Arctic temperatures. Needs vegetation. Okay. I think we have safely seen enough of this system. Um, not that we couldn't stay here longer. We absolutely could, but I am itching to go to the next system. So we're going to do that. There it is. We're zeroed in. I'm curious if a black hole will always travel you to the same location or if it varies. I would imagine it always goes to the same location, but to be fair, I've never built a base in a system with a black hole and then traveled back to it and went back through it to see if it does the same thing. That might be worth doing for science. I'll write this second. Even if we were going to do it here, we'd have to go through once before we could go through twice. Herp a derp. Alright, prepare for the event horizon. We are approaching the point of no return. Away we go. All right. Ooh. And look at that. The Yimi system. One million light years. Yeah, but not necessarily in the direction we wanted to go. Let's assess our overall closeness. Wow, we're actually significantly closer than we were. Yeah, they want us to keep making jumps to the black holes so we can keep jumping closer and closer to the center of the system. Wow, we're way out on the... On the I was going to say eastern, but I guess just... Yeah, for the sake of the flat map of the galaxy, the eastern side of the Euclid galaxy, a good bit closer. It looks like we're almost 30 to 40,000 light years closer than we were. I'm not sure exactly where we were, but it seems like we're a good bit closer. A lot of planets here. One, two, three, four, five planets. Mid range economy. Dominated by the Viking. Well, I think the first order of business is to go ahead and get our capital ship brought up here. And we'll have to assess what sort of planets are in this system. Ooh. I know what kind of planet that is. Alright, let's get our capital ship summoned. And we'll go ahead and dock for the time being. And maybe do a little bit of housekeeping in the next episode before we begin to explore this system. That's where we're going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for joining me. I do hope you've had a good time watching. Because as always, I've had a good time playing. Until next time, take care.